What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. If you're a junior developer, you're in your first year, second year, what's your plan for 2024? To remain excited in this industry for years to come, you need to, each year, reevaluate not only where the market or the industry is in relation to where you are, but also your own growth in health, in salary increase, in seeing your skill level go up. So in this video, I'm gonna provide you with a 2024 junior developer checklist to help you out. And it's gonna have nine items on it. Now, of course, everyone sits situation is different, and some of these may or may not apply, but my aim here is to give you some thoughtful information to ponder and consider to help make sure that you look back on 2024 as a year of measured success. Let's get started. Number one, you'll want to go deeper. The industry has changed competition is in, and you'll need to go deeper in your spare time rather than learning more languages. I did a video on this exact topic last week. I'll put a link above if you want to check that out. But essentially, we self-taught developers have holes in our learning that we need to fill. And we don't really realize it, but it's the reason for the imposter syndrome and the struggle. Because we often just don't know that we're lacking concepts that tie all of these technologies together. And with AI writing code for us and technology getting more and more advanced, we need to focus now more than ever on filling the gaps in gaining a better understanding of the deeper layers of this computer science field so that we're equipped to tackle any language, framework, problem, bug, issue, etc. And as I recommended before, you can start by watching a few CS50 lectures. And someone in the comments of the last video recommended teachyourselfcs.com. Just spend 30 minutes a week learning some computer science principles this year, things like memory management, networking, data structures, etc. And be sure to plan out your weeks in this regard. In fact, today's sponsor is the perfect tool to help you do this. So I started using Scrental recently, and it's going to be a complete game changer for me in 2024. Scrental gives you an easy to use digital canvas to convert your creative ideas and complex thoughts into structured knowledge. Whether you're a content creator, a software engineer, or a team of researchers or consultants, Scrental can help you take information that you process daily, structure it, and channel it into organized projects, plans, and notes that are linked, searchable, and easily shareable. For instance, here's my 2024 plan in Scrental for learning Rust and diving lower in my language repertoire. Here's my Scrental board that I've created for my 2024 goals. Here on the left, I have a card for my daily tasks that I can check off as I'm working through them. I create one of these daily. Now over here on the right, I have my 2024 goals. If I click on that, you'll see my goal of learning Rust. In the center, you have my main outline. Each one of these is linked to its own card. If I click step one, here's the information for step one. If I close this, you'll see it's also laid out here in the board. So step one is here, step two is here, step three is here. Now I actually started the Rust book first before I laid this out. So if I open that up, you'll see all of the chapters related to the Rust book. I finished chapter one and chapter two, but in chapter three, I came across some information that I needed to take notes on, and that's linked. So if I click on that, I can see my notes. I can add to the notes and reference them as needed. When I get to chapter four on understanding ownership, I had more notes to take. So this is a way for me to mind map how I'm processing Rust as I'm learning it. So when I get to chapter five, I can easily just select the text here, go to this link icon and create a new card linked to that. And while I'm working through that section, I'll take some notes, I'll change the color to be green to match my other notes, and I'll shrink it down to the size of the other notes. And I can put it directly below that. Now I've really only scratched the surface so far of Scrintle. If you wanna try this out today, go to scrintle.com and get signed up. And if you use the discount code Travis10, you'll get 10% off, or you can use the link below for that as well. I think you'll find this a great tool going into 2024. Now back to the video. Number two, are you using JavaScript at all? If so, you must learn TypeScript this year. There's no way around this one. It's too in demand. No one wants to use regular JavaScript anymore. It's dangerous. In every JavaScript job listing now mentions TypeScript. In fact, many just say TypeScript without any mention of JavaScript at all, even though it just extends JavaScript. Companies simply can't take the risk of using just plain JavaScript without the safety that TypeScript adds. The good news is that it's easy to pick up. Free Code Camp has a YouTube video out there. It's like an hour and a half. Just go and take that and add this superset to your job. JavaScript. Number three, stop learning in isolation. In doing so, you grow so much slower. Find others out there to work alongside of, or to find accountability, or to challenge you in some way to get better. I promise you, you'll learn twice as fast. When I first learned to code, I freelanced, and I freelanced for like a year. Just me and my computer and the clients. And when I landed that first corporate job, and I had to work alongside other 
great developers. Not only did I learn faster, but I saw how other people work, how their code looked different than mine. I had them critique my own coding and the whole process really helped me level up faster. Now, most of us were 100% remote and I don't really have the best answer for you on how to implement this. Maybe meetups, maybe more online pair programming or just weekly hangouts online. Code in public, as they call it, and have other people critique your work. The main issue here is that many of us, we work remote and outside of one daily standup, we rarely interact with other developers directly. So just find a way to code with others or to be involved in some kind of regular coding discussions. You'll have to figure this one out. Number four, are you using AI to speed up your workflow? If not, then you're missing out and you'll miss out in 2024. Sure, it isn't perfect, it messes up, but if I can bootstrap the skeleton of a new project in seconds, or it helps me detect a bug, or think about if you have to return some JSON and you wanna build a schema for it. You can simply save time by giving some field names and types in a sentence to GPT and asking it to build it for you. Copy paste. I've found so many instances of that kind of thing where it just speeds up menial tasks like that. So be cautious, but use it to boost your productivity. It's not going anywhere. Number five, give some thought to your current position or your state of life. Are you happy where you're at? Do you want to be in a different technology, role, language, stack, or culture? Do you think you should be paid more for your work? Remember, the best time to shop around is when you already have a job because you're under no obligation and you still have a paycheck coming and you get a new year to define or refine your current occupational position in life. So set one simple goal in where you want to be and a plan to get there next year. Number six, this year, take ample time off. You need it. Senior devs do it and managers do it regularly. But juniors, because we're always in this defensive state trying to keep up, feel like we have to work all the time. But companies are actually in your favor. Most want you to take time for your health, so take it pursue a new hobby. And your coding will actually get better by clearing your head. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's not. Don't do that thing where you save your hours and then cash it in at the end of the year, if your company does that sort of thing. The money is of way less value than your health. So use it all up. Yes, even your sick time, if you don't feel well, or you just need a day to clear your head. Number seven, what are you doing with your money? What are you doing with that nice salary? Are you buying expensive things and still living paycheck to paycheck? Well, look, you might not want to code forever or you might not be able to. A new car is actually a depreciating asset. A car loan is a liability. So set a percentage of your income aside. Invest it in assets. Use it to make you more money so that you can have more freedom later. Not retirement later, but 10 years later. Also, you don't have to live in a location where you're paying $4,000 a month for a two bedroom apartment when most of the tech work is completely remote. A better goal is to live somewhere cheaper, but with a big city salary. I actually have a house on three acres of land and I pay 800 bucks a month. It makes a big difference. Number eight, what are you building on the side? One of the best ways to get better is to build from scratch and to always have something on the side that you're learning and coding. Not something you're following along with, but something you're actually building from scratch, something you really have to wrestle with and read documentation about and decide the architecture and the design of. It's your very own and you get to manage it and bring it to life. We should always have something like this active on the side, whether we work on it regularly or not. It keeps us sharp. Number nine, open a cloud account if you've never done so. Pick one. If you're not sure, just create an AWS account. Why? Because everyone is in the cloud. Most of the job applications request knowledge of at least one of the major clouds. I don't think you can go much longer without it. You don't have to get certified, but consider taking one of the cloud certification courses, even if it's just the cloud practitioner course, so that you'll get familiar enough to jump in if asked to do so. If you need a getting started with AWS video, I have a free YouTube video out there. I'll put a link to that below. And I'll also link to a great introductory course if you'd rather take that route. But make 2024 a year where you get yourself in the cloud. So that's my checklist for 2024. What would you add to the list? What would you recommend junior developers be doing in 2024? Let me know down below. Hello, let's get the conversation started. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.